People living with type 1 diabetes must count the carbohydrates in every meal and snack so they can give the right amount of insulin to help control blood glucose. This video will guide you on how to find the carbohydrate content of a meal or snack. Most prepackaged foods and ingredients come with a nutrition facts label that shows the serving size and other facts for the item. You may need to count out individual items like chips, cookies, or crackers, or measure an amount with a measuring cup to ensure the serving size is accurate. All the numbers on the nutrition facts label are based on the listed serving size, including the carb count. If a child plans to eat more or less than the official serving size, you will need to divide or multiply the number of carbs depending on what they will eat. We don't insist that our patients only stick to the official serving size on the nutrition facts, but we do recommend that individuals eat serving sizes that are healthy for them. Once you have located the serving size, you should look at the total carbohydrate, which is always in bold print on the food label. Total carbohydrates already includes the grams of fiber and added sugar and do not need to be added separately. The next step is asking how many servings will be eaten. If it is more than one serving or less than one serving, you will need to do some math to get the right amount of carbohydrate grams. For example, if you usually fill a bowl of cereal instead of measuring out a 3 quarters cup serving, you will need to measure to find the number of servings in the bowl. Keep in mind, the amount of cereal that gets eaten could change if you use different bowls every time. Let's say you have measured the bowl of cereal by pouring the cereal into a measuring cup and using that to fill the bowl. Using this method, you found it is equal to three servings. If the nutrition facts label says that each serving has 27 grams of carbs, then the bowl with three servings would have three times 27, which equals 81 grams of carbohydrate. If you are used to adding, it would be 27 plus 27 plus 27 equals 81 grams of carbohydrate. A calculator is always a helpful tool in doing the math for the counting carbs and the math for the right insulin dose. Remember, even in the hospital, we always have two nurses confirm the math for each insulin dose, so it never hurts to double check your work. For foods without nutrition fact labels, you may need to look up the carb information in recipe books, on websites, or using mobile apps. To improve the accuracy of these estimates, you can use a scale to measure your food and reference the weight in a book or website. You'll need to compare the weight of your food with the weight listed. For example, maybe you have measured an apple in your fridge and found it is 8 ounces. You search a credible nutrition website and find a 6-ounce apple usually has around 22 grams of carbs. If you divide 22 grams by 6 ounces, you'll find it equals 3.666 grams of carbs per ounce. You can round this number to 3.67 and multiply it by the weight of your apple, 8 ounces, to find that your apple has 29 grams of carbohydrate. This will also give you useful information for other apples in the future. People living with T1D do not need to be on a special diet or eat special foods, but certain foods can change the way the blood glucose is affected. Sugar-free foods may still contain carbs in the form of artificial sweeteners or sugar alcohols. These sugar alcohols can still raise the blood glucose, but not as fast as regular carbohydrates. Fat-free foods may have higher amounts of carbohydrates than foods with a regular amount of fat because they are filled with added sugars to compensate for the lack of fats. T1D tip. We recommend keeping a small notebook or a note on a smartphone with some go-to recipes and favorite foods to take some of the confusing math out of enjoying meals and snacks. It's also a good idea to write down the amount of insulin that's given for recipes when the carb count isn't clear, so you can refer back to that amount the next time you eat that food. If the amount of insulin needs to be changed based on the last time, you'll have a great starting point. Thanks, Rosalie. In the next video, we'll go over what makes up a healthy, balanced diet for everyone, including people with T1D.